Welcome to the video solutions for day one of Barvember. And we start with a fairly straightforward problem. Now, tip number one here is that these are the best questions for learning how to use bar models. Ones that you think are easy and that you can solve without a bar model. So don't be shy about doing these problems because you'll learn the bar modeling quickly this way. So there's our first bar model element that each bar represents a number. And if we know this number, we write it in the bar. Our second model element is to label things so we can identify which part is which. So here we've taken the first line of our model. Mo has six two toy cars and we have a red bar representing Mo's six toy cars and we've written six in the bar. We now do the same for Annie's. And there's our third bar model element, this curly bracket going across two parts or two bars, which indicates the sum or total, so adding of the bars that it covers. Here's our fourth bar model element, the question mark. And this represents what we're trying to find out or solve. And you see in the question, how many toys do they have all together? So all together is a key word for us, suggesting that we're going to add things up. So we then just do the maths. As we get the new information, we write it on our model and we've answered our question. Now, tip here, when you first read one of these questions, the first thing you're trying to find out is how many bars do I think I need? Now, I think I'm going to need two here because I can see that the question or the story is about a collar and a toy. And you can see that we've drawn our model that reflects that first line of the problem, that the collar costs three times as much as a toy. And this is a very, very important element in our bar modeling. When we see, as we do here, that we have four equal parts. In the equal parts is a really big clue for us that we are either going to be doing some multiplication or some division or indeed both, as in this case. That's the curly bracket that we saw in the previous question, which tells us that we are summing, totaling, adding the bars that it covers. So this is line two of the story that the total cost of the collar and the toy is 20 pounds. So we've put in that curly bracket and we've labeled the value of 20 to go with it. And we can see that that covers four equal parts. So it's crying out that at some point we're going to do some division. And there's another curly bracket with our question mark dealing with the final line of our story. How much does the collar cost? So there's our first calculation. We've got four equal parts, which total 20. So the maths we need to do is 20 divided by four. And that tells us that each of our parts is five. And so to solve it, we have got three lots of five. So that's multiplication. So there we are, equal parts. And we ended up doing some division and now some multiplication to finish. Question three, a bit more complicated. But let's start the same. How many bars do I think I need? Well, I can see that this story is about blue, green and yellow counters. So I'm going to start with three bars. Now, another tip here is we're trying to break this question down line by line. So let's try and get everything from one line into our model so we don't have to read it again. 
So there are 20 more blue counters than green counters. So blue is more than green. By how much? By 20. Now, here we have our sixth bar model element, which is the double-headed arrow. And that represents the difference or a subtraction between two bars. Now, that also comes in the form of how much bigger the blue bar is than the green bar or how much smaller the green bar is than the blue bar. And in our storyline, it was telling us that the blue was 20 more. Now, let's have a look one line at a time. Is everything from that first line in my model? There are 20 more blue counters than green counters. Yes, it is. I don't need to read that again, so I'm going to get rid of it. There are half as many yellow counters as green counters. So you can see that I've halved the green bar and put in a yellow bar below it. Um, and oh, those are three equal parts there. That's useful to notice. So again, one line at a time. Is everything from that line in the model? Yes, it is. Let's get rid of it. There are 415 counters in total. Now, in total, that's across all of them. So it looks like a curly bracket. Yes, there we go. Curly bracket across all the bars, 415. Important to notice that the 415 does not include this 20. 415 is the blue counters, the green counters, and the yellow counters. So the blue bar, the green bar, the yellow bar. Is all that information from line three included? Yes, it is. Let's get rid of it. Let's put in our question, which is how many green counters are there? So we now need to just look at our model. Now, we've talked about equal parts before, and we've got a little bit of a problem here in that our green and yellow bars are made up of equal parts, three equal parts, but our blue bar isn't. And we're going to now see how we adjust our blue bar so that everything is made up of equal parts. And we're going to do that by getting rid of this little part of the bar, the part that has 20 in it. And suddenly, you can see that if we get rid of this little piece of 20 at the end of the blue bar, then I'll have one, two, three, four, five equal parts. So let's see how the calculations progress. And it is simply a question of getting rid of that 20 so that my three bars without the 20 total 395. Five equal parts, and I'll let you follow the maths through yourselves from there. Okay, final question, question four. Now, a little tip here. Don't lose sight of what we're doing here. We're trying to visualize our problem. And once we can see that problem, we find these problems easier to solve. And one of the reasons that they're easy, easier is that we are less likely to make an error. And in a question like this, that has a third and 284 in it, many students are going to make a mistake, as you will see it's a mistake, of calculating one third of 284. So let's see how our model goes. So that's our washing machine, one bar. And we're told that the price of the washing machine increases by a third. So we're going to add on another third. And the cost of that washing machine is now 284. And so we can actually see that, yes, we have equal parts, but we don't have three equal parts. We have four equal parts. How much did the washing machine cost before the increase? How many bar parts is that? That is the three original thirds. 
So we can actually see that the first calculation we're going to do is to divide by four to find the value of each part, and then three of those to find out the cost before the increase. So there you go. That's the end of the video solutions for day one of Barvember. I hope, hope you found that useful. Make sure you do have a go at the problems before you look at the video solutions and uh, email questions to your teacher if you're still struggling once you've watched these videos. See you tomorrow.